transition to our next speakers, the Gold Together Ambassadors, Bill and Dana Sue Cruz. The Gold Together for Childhood Cancer Movement was created by childhood cancer brain cancer survivor Cole Eicher, who envisioned a Gold Together team at every Relay for Life event, starting with his team in St. Petersburg, Florida. Gold Together volunteers raise awareness, support families facing childhood cancer, and connect those families to a lifetime of resources through the American Cancer Society. Bill and Dana Sue have both had siblings who fought cancer as children. Dana Sue's brother is a survivor, but Bill unfortunately lost his sister at a very young age. Bill has also fought cancer as an adult and survived. Dallas-Fort Worth locals, they are here to share a message about moving forward and making a difference to those facing cancer now. Please welcome to the stage, Bill and Dana Sue. not Dallas, and there is a big difference. <laughs> so, thank y'all for letting us be here. It's a great uh, privilege to be in the presence of people who have excelled in philanthropy. It really means a lot to us. And those fundraising dollars definitely are making a difference across our nation and the world. You know, the interesting thing about cancer, it doesn't discriminate. Cancer doesn't care about your age. Cancer doesn't care about your gender. It doesn't care about your ethnicity. <clears throat> cancer doesn't care about your socioeconomic background. It doesn't care what language you speak and it doesn't care where you come from. In fact, it doesn't even care if you're human. Even our pets get cancer. So the thing about cancer, since it doesn't discriminate, neither should we. We need to come together in a great <coughs> spirit of unity to bring an end to these diseases. And I am thankful to each and every one of you for choosing to do that very thing. As they mentioned, we're here tonight to talk about the fact that cancer doesn't discriminate against children. It attacks them every single day and it's completely and totally unfair. And since this is a room full of people who are very young, to me you're young because I'm 53, um, Y'all, I'm sure you will understand. You get to go to school, you get to do all of the things that you do in your life, play your sports and all of that. But there are a lot of kids out there who don't. So we're here tonight to thank you for your fundraising and to talk to you about those kids. We have to have notes because we're old. <laughs> and they're printed big because we're old. <laughs> And that table back there, y'all are on my list. <laughs> Go Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so we've got people here from both coasts, uh, California, the East Coast, West Coast, all that. And I, it's amazing to me to see all that. And so first of all, I wanted to say thank you all for doing that and being here today. I hope that next year, if I had come back here, that I'd see some schools from Texas. That would be awesome. But welcome to the great state of Texas and howdy. <laughs> so, hey, raising funds for childhood cancer may not be an easy task, but it is one of the most important missions on planet Earth. Every year, 17,000 children and teenagers are diagnosed with cancer, and this number continues to increase. By the end of 2023, almost 2,000 of those kids will die leaving behind grieving parents, siblings, family, and friends, and it is completely unfair. I know what it feels like. When I was eight years old, my little sister died of leukemia. She was diagnosed at the age of five, and in the 1970s when she got sick, most kids died within three months. We were lucky. We were really lucky because Michelle made it a whole year. And I'll never forget, it was my last day of school in second grade, my sister had been doing great, at least I thought. When I was leaving school that day, the school secretary asked me about her, and I smiled and said, she's better. I was not at all prepared for what happened when I got home. My parents weren't there, my sister wasn't there, but my grandmother was there, and she told me my sister had died earlier that day. Our lives were never the same again. Cancer is very cruel, and it takes a strong army working together to bring it to an end. Y'all are great soldiers and should be proud of it. Yes, you should be proud. And I hope that you're also 
motivated tonight to continue the good fight. And when kids get cancer, y'all, it absolutely is a fight. It's a fight for the kids and it's a fight for their friends and it's a fight for their families. Just like Bill, I also know what it's like to be a child with a sibling with cancer. When I was seven years old, my little baby brother, who was a year and a half old, was diagnosed with cancer. In fact, when he got diagnosed, the doctors said that he would not survive and they told us to start planning for his funeral. But my brother is very, very stubborn. He defied the odds and beat his cancer. He's alive and well and lives in Fort Worth near us. And so I'm very grateful for his survivorship. But because I was seven and I was introduced to cancer at such an early age, I'll never forget walking those hospital halls in the pediatric oncology area and seeing all those other kids with cancer and thought to myself, how unfair this is. To think about kids having cancer is, like I said earlier, kids ought to be outside playing. They ought to be riding their bikes. They should be playing video games or, or going to the movies with their friends. They should be going to school. They should be playing sports or musical instrument. They should be allowed to take selfies with a head full of hair. And I know all of you agree with that. The thing is, instead, they're in the hospital. They're hooked up to machines with poison pumping through their veins. For Bill and for me, being a part of the Gold Together Advisory Council, we have a National Advisory Council, it's given us this feeling that we're not just talking, but we're doing something. By joining forces with American Cancer Society's initiative to bring an end to childhood cancer, we not only advocate by raising our voices, but we get to raise funds too. We get to spread the message that kids get cancer and to encourage people who are unaffected by pediatric cancer to get involved. Do y'all know who Helen Keller was? She has a famous quote, which was, alone we can do so little, but together we can do so much. And that's what we say at Gold Together. We say that we are stronger together. Gold Together, and I don't know if any of you have seen any of the Gold Together teams at your relay events, because instead of uh, wearing the purple, we wear gold. That's why we're wearing our gold tonight. But we, we represent uh, Gold Together at Relay for Life events. Oh, are, are these pictures of that, by the way? Yeah, okay, I wasn't looking at the slides. And um, so the Gold Together teams, all of the money that is raised by those teams goes into uh, the Gold Together campaign. And then in September, which is, which was mentioned earlier, that's National Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. In September, we also give people the opportunity to be a part of our Champions for Childhood Cancer, which is a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising opportunity with 100% of the funds going to childhood cancer research. And the coolest thing is that we are currently funding 44 different multi-year grants in the amount of $26 million. And that money goes to researchers who are specifically working to develop better therapies that are less toxic for children and teenagers. And that's very much needed because right now, children and teenagers, anybody under the age of 20, who is diagnosed with cancer is being forced to take the most aggressive chemotherapies and radiation therapies that exist. And they don't just do six months, they do years of it. So the goal with those drugs, of course, is to kill the cancer. Unfortunately, however, because they're so toxic, many times they end up killing the children. And if they survive, almost 100% of them are left with life-altering permanent side effects, including such things as rotting out teeth, damage to their heart, their liver, all of their internal organs, infertility, and the increased risk for developing all kinds of cancers later on in their lives. Completely and totally unacceptable. We're grateful for the researchers who are working to develop targeted therapies and immunotherapies that are specific for these kids to help change those outcomes. 
as mentioned, and I want to say this again because I think it's so important, Gold Together was started by a very strong, courageous 12-year-old named Cole Eicher. I hope someday y'all get the chance to meet Cole. When he was diagnosed with brain cancer, he was bold enough to go up to the president of the American Cancer Society and say that more needed to be done for kids with cancer. Thankfully, the president agreed, and he hired Cole's mom, Laura, to head up the Gold Together initiative. Today, Cole is almost 22 years old, and he is alive because of research. Cole, along with his mom, continued to fight on behalf of all kids with cancer. They are a couple of very humble, gracious people with powerful courage and strength, and they've made a huge impact on childhood cancer. This campaign is changing the world for kids with cancer. Y'all, we are nowhere near the finish line in what sometimes feels like a marathon, sometimes feels like an Ironman triathlete. We are nowhere near finished yet. We have a long way to go. We have a long way to go until that day when we can declare a victory in the war against childhood cancer. Until we get there, the battles rage on. But I'm thankful for all of you. A lot of that money that you raised actually is going to fund pediatric cancer research. And I'm very thankful to you. So I'm gonna go off script a little bit and she's gonna hit me in a minute, but that'll be okay. <laughs> so how many of y'all have actually known a child or a peer that had, has, has had cancer? Wow. So you know what we're talking about here, how painful it is, how hard it is on those. Myself, I, coming this October 14th, will be celebrating 20 years of fighting cancer. Woohoo! And so, Mine's an incurable cancer, but it's been in remission for almost 20 years now. So we're excited for the work that the American Cancer Society is doing, not just for young adults and uh, youth and children, but also for us. And I was included in that young adult age group whenever I had cancer. So now I'll go back on script. <laughs> These kids and their families have been dealt a huge blow and they need people like you and me to say enough. They need us to support them and fight for them, in addition to fighting by raising funds and for researchers. Each of you in this room can also fight by becoming advocates. Even if you're not old enough to vote yet, you can choose to write letters to our legislators. You can tell them what you, let them know that we need certain bills passed and funds given specifically for childhood and adolescent cancers. So of all the funds that are given by Congress, to research cancer, only 8% of those actually go to childhood cancer. And that's up from 4% two years ago. So it's a very small part of the funds given by Congress and the government that even goes to childhood cancer. All right, in concluding my piece of it, Dana Sue and I will both be at the Gold Together table, I guess it's gonna be upstairs tonight to share resources with you and give you some ideas of things you can do to help kids with cancer. We'd love to chat and meet you and get to know each one of you, so please come visit us. And again, thank you for being champions and changing the lives of kids with cancer. Um, and I, I think, I don't know if this is our last picture. I didn't look, I'm sorry. I didn't look to see what all the photos were. And um, some of these pictures that are flashing here right now were from last year when we were in Washington, D.C. We'll be back there again this year. We go, um, we send um, a huge team. There are thousands and thousands of people, I call it a sea of gold that hits Washington DC each year for this organization Cure Fest. And all of the different childhood cancer organizations come together and it's so nice to have ACS represented there. We get a booth right there in the middle of, of the whole thing and, and we get a lot of people coming and talk to us. But also what's so cool is we have these young ambassadors starting at the age of 13 um, most of them are either cancer survivors or they're a sibling of a cancer survivor. And so we have, we have these teenagers all the way through like age 24, is that what it is? Who go in and sit and talk to the, to the uh, Congress people and they, um, they kind of represent the face for childhood cancer. And so I think some of these pictures are from that. This picture is from the last day of CureFest. Um, Every year, as we mentioned, 
uh, 1,800 kids die of cancer. And at the last day of CureFest, there are 1,800 pairs of empty shoes that are from real life patients who died. And it's one of the most impactful things. It's extremely life changing to look at those shoes and to see all the different shapes and sizes and colors and to know that those little little shoes should still be full of the feet that wore them. It's really, really unfair. Nobody should have to go through cancer, but especially a kid. But I'm so thankful to ACS for represent being represented in Washington, D.C. I'm thankful for our young ambassadors who go and talk to the legislators and remind them that kids get cancer too and we have to do better. And even though it's, it's only 8% of federal funding that is helping, uh, that is going towards child to cancer, as Bill mentioned, that's up from years of it only being 4%. That's what advocacy does. And that's what American Cancer Society is about. Thank y'all so much for bringing an end to childhood cancer. Oh, and we'll answer all your questions when you see us at the expo.